welcome to TOS TV, your digital first Pan-African news network. I am Ruel Panawa, and this is TOS National News. Ahmed, a final year student of Government Science College, Kangara, the headquarters of Rafi local government area of Niger State, was amongst those that escaped during the attack that led to the abduction of at least 42 people, including students, staff members, and their relatives. Ahmed still believes the attack of Tuesday could have been averted if he and his colleagues had relayed the intelligence they got hours earlier to the school management. On that day, we were sitting in the hostel. Then we got a phone call from our friends that armed bandits are coming to our school, but we did not care. We just told our school head boy to tell the management, but he did not do so, he told Premium Times. Ando State Governor Rotimi Akira Dulu has described as provoking and insensitive the comments made by his Bauchi State counterpart Bala Mohammed. The Nigerians don't need Akira Dulu's permission to live in Ondo Forest. Akira Dulu also warned Mohammed not to set the country on fire with the rhetorics. Reacting in a statement through his special assistant on new media, Ola Bode Ola Tunde, Akira Dulu urged Nigerians to disregard Mohammed's comments. The statement partly read very provoking and insensitive. As the statement appears, we can only err on, this, uh, on the side of caution by advising Governor Bala Mohammed not to set Nigeria on fire by his thoughts that are highly destructive and undermining national cohesion. Nigerians should ignore him and rather focus on those issues that can bring about peace and engender unity. Akira Dulu had also slammed Mohammed for saying herders have the right to bear AK-47 rifle for self-protection. Still on matters of insecurity in Nigeria, Governor Kayade Fayemi of Ikiti and his colleague Nasser El Rufai of Kaduna have advocated state police and devolution of power between the federal government and states of the country. The governors who spoke at a virtual program on Friday advocated state police and decentralized judiciary. The program was tagged the fierce urgency of now, tactics and strategies to pull Nigeria from the brink. Orufai said having a state police is critical to the immediate needs of the country to pull back from the brink, saying one centralized police for the country just has not worked. Also, the anomaly of a federation that has a more or less unitary judiciary must be rectified, the governor said. Gombe State Government on Friday imposed 24 hours curfew due to the continued blockade of Yola Gombe Highway, which has stalled movement in Biliri local government area of the state over the paramount ruler's tool, Maitangali. Women in their hundreds had mounted checks at various points due to what they considered deliberate delay tactics of the Inua Yahawa led administration to announce his preferred choice to the Maitangalis to different from the candidate with the highest vote. Confirming the decision of the government to enforce curfew in the press briefing, the Secretary to the State Government, Professor Ibrahim Njodi, said the curfew is the government's last resort to finding peace in the area. While giving assurance of the state government's commitment to tackling the brewing security challenge, he said peace will not be sacrificed for anything. You are watching national news on your digital first Pan-African news network, TOS TV. Do stay with us for more stories after the break. <music> Welcome back. Now to politics. Intra-party crisis threatening to tear apart the ruling All Progressive Congress APC have worsened due to the ongoing membership registration and validation exercise in all state chapters. The exercise reportedly didn't take off at the Federal Capital Territory FCT chapter alongside others due to unreadiness of its coded registration documents. While the exercise is without serious hitches in some state chapters, it is the opposite in other chapters. Most notable is the Kwara State Chapter, where the Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Mohammed, has been crying foul over the alleged marginalization of his loyalists in the exercise. With the party's congresses and national convention to follow almost immediately after the registration validation exercise, whoever gets to register fewer party faithful is technically out of reckoning in his base since party executives down the line would be determined by party members based on the ongoing exercise. Former Senate President Bukola Saraki led the People's Democratic Party PDP Reconciliation Committee on Friday to meet former military president General Ibrahim Babangida behind closed doors at his hilltop residence in Mina. 
The former Senate president and members of his committee arrived at about 12 p.m. The meeting lasted for three hours, after which they proceeded to the residence of the former military head of state, General Abdus Salami Abubakar, and the state governor, Abubakar Sani Bello. Speaking to newsmen after the meeting, Saraki said the committee was in Mina to consult with the former military president. He assured that the, the committee, pardon me, will be fair to all those that are aggrieved within the party. Saraki appealed to those who are aggrieved to give peace a chance. He said the committee will meet all youth and women groups within the party next week in order to get their inputs. Away from politics, new details have emerged about the case against Instagram influencer Ramon Abbas, fondly referred to as Hush Puppy. According to the United States of America's Department of Justice, Hush Puppy laundered money for North Korean hackers. The revelation was known when federal prosecutors in Los Angeles unsealed the case against one Galib Alomari, 37, of Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, for his role as a money launderer for the North Korean conspiracy, among other criminal schemes. Alomari agreed to plead guilty to conspiracy to engage in money laundering, a charge contained in criminal information filed in the United States District Court in Los Angeles on November 17, 2020. During Alomari's confession, he fingered Hush Puppy as one of his co-conspirators. The federal government has announced the engagement of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offices, Offenses Commission, ICPC, to checkmate any fraud in its ongoing social investment programs across the country. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Hajiya Sadia Umar Farooq, revealed this to journalists Friday in Katsina during the training of 117 independent monitors at the State Local Government Service Commission. The minister, represented by the assistant director, ICT, in the ministry, Mr. Aminu Tukur, said any beneficiary of the social intervention programs found violating the rules of engagement will be handed over to the anti-craft agencies for investigation and prosecution. The monitor, she said, after training, would be assigned to supervise beneficiaries of the social investment programs within their locality, schools, households, market clusters, and make assessments. Consequently, she charged the 117 independent monitors to carry out their duties with diligence and sincerity as enshrined in the rules of engagement and the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You are watching TOS National News on your digital first Pan-African news network, TOS TV. Still ahead, business and sports. Do stay tuned. <music> Thank you for staying tuned. You are still watching national news on TOS TV in business. There are indications that the nation's so dependent on crude oil revenue may end in the next 10 years if the current efforts being made by government to improve Nigeria's non-oil exports can be sustained. The executive director, CEO of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC, Mr. Shagun Awulawa, made this known Friday while briefing reporters after a closed-door meeting with President Muhammad Buhari at the State House in Abuja. According to him, within the next decade, Nigeria can get $30 billion in terms of non-oil export, despite the effects of the current COVID-19 pandemic on the nation's economy. We cannot run an economy that 90% of our earnings are from crude oil. It is just not working, and that is what we are seeing throughout the years when we went into first recession, when the world oil prices stood worldwide. And in sports, Super Eagles coach Jernot Raw is stalling on the immediate consideration of players in the Nigerian Professional Football League for national team assignments ahead of next month's final set of qualifying matches for the 2022 Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon. The Franco-German coach speaking in a chat with Brilla.net said he's excited to see the top flight football league in Nigeria return to the television and has seen some games already. He has also added that he will be watching more games but that there is the need to see more league games and what the players are doing before having them considered for the national team. And that is the national news on your digital first Pan African news network. For more updates visit www.tostvnetwork.com. 
Do follow and like TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy my programs on TOS TV Network. I am Ruel Pinal. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.